Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Today, I've got to visit what Donald J. Trump just did in Pennsylvania in a town hall meeting. Oh, my gosh. It, this is epic. This is epic. He's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. That's right. Pennsylvania, which is one of the battleground areas. And you know who usually wins Pennsylvania wins the White House. And also I've got some funny stuff from Saturday Night Live. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, watch the video to the end. Now let's get into it. We have some special guests in the audience. We have a Gold Star family that is with us tonight. Mary and Charles Strange Great. are here. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, here they are, sir. They're behind us uh, over oh, here to the left. come on up here. Come on. They lost their son, Michael. Come on up. Come on up here. It's a little harder to get up since I got shot. <laughs> They've made it more difficult. Perhaps that's the way it's supposed to be. Sir, they I lost know. their son, How Michael. President John, great to see you again, man. Since he's six, he's the boom. That's beautiful. Under Obama, all 30 guys died. Did you want to say anything? Under Obama is right. Under Obama. Uh, please, on behalf of your son. I would ask, Mr. President, my son was killed August 6, 2011, with 29 other men. It was the biggest loss of life in the Iraq and Afghan war. It was the biggest loss of life in a single day in the history of America. 22 of them men were Navy Special Warfare. Till to this day, we still haven't gotten any answers. I was wondering, I'm begging you, we would like a congressional hearing. So here's what we're going to do. In the first week, let me have a, not the first day, because I made a lot of promises in the first day. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to close up the border. We're going to do a lot in the first day. In the first week, we will set up a commission. We're going to find out, because so many people in your same position, they want to know what happened. Why did it happen to their son or daughter? And we're going to do that within the first week. So you get ready to come over to the White House, OK? Thank All right, you, Mr. President. I gotta say one more thing. I want to let America know, June 2017, President Trump and his wife had me and my wife bring 20 gold stars to the White House. Him and his wife stayed the whole time. They had food, drinks. They did a candle ceremony for us. President Trump stood up every time, saluted the gold star parents. That was... Both a celebration, a remembrance. It was. It had all emotion, right? There were every. They were happy. They were sad. They were devastated. But uh, they remembered their beautiful boy, right? Yes, their yes. beautiful boy. And we're not going to forget. We're going to find out what happened. We're going to do that in the, within the first week. And uh, you have my word. Okay. Thank you, President Thank Trump. Wow. Whoa. That's big promise. President Donald J. Trump. I hope he can deliver. But you know, I just pray that everybody this like gets out of Donald Trump's way so he can do good. Because this man and wife, his this these are the parents, their son was killed August 2011. That was under the Obama administration, and there were no answers given. See, a lot of bad presidents, a lot of wars go on, and then loss of life with no answers, no kind of love towards the family members that lost their loved ones, their son or their daughters. Sometimes women fight for their country. So, I mean, gosh, and Donald Trump seems to care. And that whole ceremony where he had them come to the White House and had food and drinks and candles lit and everything, that's special. And see, the Democrat media won't talk about this. They're going to try and spew every little thing. He says, if they were to show anything of this, they would show the part where the lady said, okay, Mr. President, they lost their, their son. <laughs> and then the media would say, see, he was talking about himself. And they lost their son. And they would only show that little part. They spin and, and instigate every little thing and nitpick every little thing that Donald Trump says and twist it rather than look at what he's actually done. Okay, what has he done? All right, that actually impacts lives. That impacted them in a good way.
He showed that he cared. And I'm going to always bring up what he did in remembrance of Corey Comperturi, that man, that retired fire fighter that lost his life in Butler on um, July 13th. He was a wonderful man, married with two girls. He was a, a girl dad and he lost his life protecting his family. And we want to remember Corey and also the Gold Star families that that disasters pull out from Afghanistan, which happened August 26, 2021 under Biden-Harris administration. And those families got on social media and blasted Kamala and blamed her for what happened. And because she's trying to make it seem like it was, you know, he did something bad at the remembrance ceremony. You just trying to get, you was just upset because you didn't actually have the decency to show up and you try to make what he did be a bad thing. That's what it is. It's a bunch of projection, a bunch of lying coming from the left. And these people appreciate Donald Trump. And I want us to know what a real president is again, because we don't have one right now. I don't even know who's running the country. Who's running the country? I don't even know. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I agree. I got the proof. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. What a nice couple. Mary and Charles' daughter, Rachel, is also here tonight. She is Michael's sister, so... Thank you, Rachel, for coming tonight, too, and God bless you and your family. Thank you for Thank your you. service and your sacrifice. Thank you, darling. Yes. Thank you, honey. That's tough stuff. It is. Thank you for your commitment to... And like what we were discussing in Afghanistan with the 13 family members, they feel that uh, bad things happen, stupid things happen, and you hate for that to be, and it's your son or your daughter. They There's deserve no answers. Reason. It should have never happened in Afghanistan, I can tell you that, the 13 that died. And you know, they don't mention there were many people wounded too, and I mean seriously wounded with the legs and the arms and the face. And uh, we're gonna give them everything they want. I've gotten to know those families, thanks. Thank you, sir. Sir, our next question tonight is from Angelina, who I believe is right here. If you wanna come forward, Angelina. Hi, Angelina. Hi. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. Let me stand up for you. Go ahead. <laughs> My name's Angelina, and I was raised in a Philadelphia Democrat household, a union household. As a, blended, uh, as a mother of a blended family, my top issues are the same issues that face all Americans. Illegal immigration hurts black Americans. Inflation hurts black Americans. And dangerous cities hurt black Americans. <laughs> Like my fellow Americans, my grocery bill has not gone down. Everything is still so very expensive. What steps will your, your administration take to help American families suffering from this inflation? So, you know, it's such a great question in the sense that people don't think of grocery. You know, it sounds like not such an important word when you talk about homes and everything else, right? But more people tell me about grocery bills where the price of bacon, the price of lettuce, the price of tomatoes, they tell me. Uh, and we're going to do a lot of things. You know, our farmers aren't being treated properly. And we had a deal with China, and it was a great deal. I never mentioned it because once COVID came in, I said that was a bridge too far because I had a great relationship with President Xi. And he's a fierce man, and he's a man that likes China, and I understand that. But we had a deal, and he was perfect on that deal. $50 billion he was going to buy. We were doing numbers like you wouldn't believe for the farmer. But the farmers are very badly hurt. The farmers in this country, we're going to get them straightened out. We're going to get your prices down. But you asked another question about safety and also about black population jobs and Hispanic population, in particular those two. So when millions of people pour into our country, they're having a devastating effect on black families and Hispanic families more than any others. I think it's going to spread to a lot of other places. I think it's going to spread to unions. I think unions are going to have a big problem because, uh, you know, employers are just not going to pay the price. They're going to, and it's going to be, it's a very bad thing that's happening. So they're coming in, many are coming in from jails and prisons and mental institutions and sane asylums. That's like, you know, a step above, right? A sane asylum. And whenever I go, uh, Hannibal Lecter, you know what I'm talking about. They always go the fake news. That's a lot of fake news back there too. But,
They always mention, you know, it's a way of demeaning. They just say, Hannibal Lecter, why would he mention? Well, you know why? Because he was a sick puppy. And we have sick puppies coming into our country. I figure that's a lot. That's better than wasting a lot of words. You just say Hannibal Lecter. We don't want him. But, but they always sort of say, why would he say that? I do it for a lot of reasons, but I do it because we are allowing some very bad people into our country and they're coming as terrorists. You know, you saw the other day, last month, they had the record number of terrorists. I had a month and I love Border Patrol. Did you see they gave me a full endorsement two days ago? Border Patrol. The Border Patrol. And they're, they're great. And, you know, they want to do their job. They don't want to let these people come in. They look at them. They can tell. They can they could look at somebody, say good, bad. They say what's coming into our country now is having a huge negative impact on black families and on Hispanic families and ultimately on everybody. And we're going to close that border so tight it's going to be closed. And, and I said the two things I'm going to do. First, we're going to close that border and people are going to come in. You want people to come in. We need people to come in. People are going to come into our country legally. You know, it's so unfair. You have people that are waiting on a system, on a line, and they've been waiting on this line, you know how long, for years, 10 years, 12 years, and they study and they take tests. And then, and then people come. I actually say, why don't you just go on the, just come on across. I tell people that it's terrible, right? I say, go out. You're incredible. They say, what can I do to speed up the process? I say, you know what? Go to the southern border. I'll see you on the other side. It's so unfair, but we're going to have them come in legally. You have to see what they have to do. They take tests on, you know, who was the first one here? What date was this? What does 1776 mean? What is, all the stuff. And these other people are coming in and they're affecting the school systems and they're affecting the hospital system. I mean, if you take a look at what's going on in Springfield, Ohio, a town of 50,000 people, they've just added 32,000 people illegal immigrants and we're not going to put up with it and we're going to take care of your costs are going to come down and you're not going to have a problem with uh because the biggest problem and i'm hearing it from black people and to a lesser extent right now but it'll be the same hispanic people and i'll tell you what our poll numbers have gone through the roof with black and hispanic have gone through the roof and i like that i like that i like that so we're going to take care of it. You will be, I'll tell you, if everything works out, if everybody gets out and votes on January 5th or before, you know, it used to be, you'd have a date. Today, you can vote two months before, probably three months after. They don't know what the hell they're doing. But we're going to straighten it all out. We're going to straighten that out, too. We're going to straighten our election process out, too. That's going to be important, also. So thank you very much, Donald. Yes, he misspoke there. He meant to say November 5th. He, he said January 5th. You know, we I typically just speak on this channel all the time. Sometimes I say interview instead of video. I don't know why I say it. <laughs> but in any event, that's part of the town hall in Pennsylvania. And he is concerned about certain... He's a First of all, let me just be clear. Donald Trump is concerned about all Americans, but he notices that certain groups are being more negatively impacted than others. So he, he is saying black and Hispanic, but he's for everybody. I don't want anybody to get it twisted. He's for everybody. But they're pouring the illegals into the black and brown neighborhoods. That's where they're sending them. And that's why it's so imperative that that is taken care of. He said he's going to have the largest deportation in American history. <laughs> he is going to close that border, so seal it so tight. He's got to hire a bunch of agents and he's got to hire people that are not able to be paid off and able to backstab and do stuff like that. He's got to hire the right people. And in any event, that was in Pennsylvania. That was a young lady by the name of Angelina. And you saw the Gold Star family. They lost a loved one, their son in 2011. And I don't think the Obama administration did anything. And that was during Obama's closing of his first term. I am so thankful that God is using someone to help get this country back. It's not all about Donald Trump. It's about what God wants to do. Let's be clear. 
warriors. It's not about Donald Trump. It's about what God wants to do using him. It doesn't have to be Donald Trump that God uses. He could have used somebody else, but he's the person that God is using. So as a believer, as a Christian, as a true believer in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm going to go with the one that God is using, not the one that Satan is using. Because when I line up their policy side by side, I agree with everything Donald Trump said. He's pro-Israel. He believes there's two genders. He's not for men participating in women's sports. He's not for changing who, how God made you and teaching that in the schools. I mean, every, and he's for promoting Judeo-Christian values. I got to go with him. Yes, he says things off the cuff, but the media twists his words. The media you know, it's controlled by Satan because Satan is the prince of the airwaves. And I've told you guys this, be careful what your eyes and ears hear because it can bewitch, it can control, manipulate, and brainwash if we're not careful. Next, I want to share with you guys this clip from Saturday Night Live. It is hilarious. <laughs> Name something that you keep in your glove compartment. Oh, B.P. Harris. Steve, look. <laughs> raised in a middle class family all right oh here we go okay my mother raised my sister and me mm -hmm. all right yeah. she worked hard and saved up yeah uh -huh. and we had a second mother too okay did that mother have a glove compartment a small business owner named miss shelton okay we got that something that you keep in your glove compartment all right guys i hope you all enjoyed that sometimes it's just good to have a good laugh thank you all for watching don't forget to like comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. On my way to 100,000 subscribers. I hope to get there soon, very soon. And thank you all for your support. It really means a lot. Now, you can catch me on Instagram, TikTok, and X as chat with me, Linda B. You can also email me, chat with me, Linda B at gmail.com. Also, I'm on Rumble. Put in chat with me, Linda B, but type it in as one word when you're on Rumble. Thank you all for watching. All right. Thank you so much for supporting me. Love God, your families, these United States of America. And as I always say, march on warriors.